Guys, congratulations on Ralph Breaks the Internet. I enjoyed the first Wreck-It Ralph so much and I'm so glad that the sequel lived up to it. Oh, thank you. Thank it was you just very brilliant. Much. And I was really surprised to see that Ralph Breaks the Internet is actually the first Disney animated sequel since, um, whatchamacallit, The Rescuers Down Under back yeah. in 1990. Yeah. So thinking back to when Wreck-It Ralph came out and everything, how did you feel when you heard the news that you were going to get to revisit these characters again? I, it, well, it felt great. Um, it was it was our idea um, to to actually go back to them, mm -hmm. and our studio doesn't do like you say. We it's been in business for ninety five years, and it's only done two uh, sequels before this one. So, it, it, the idea of doing a sequel came out of our heads or out of our hearts of wanting to revisit these characters to to say some more with them. Uh, because we really love them, and and the the cast and the crew that worked on the first movie um, is like family. So it was like getting the band back together. And was there any kind of you know sense of pressure with the fact that you were you know coming back as a sequel either? Well, we're pretty delusional, so we tend to <laughs> com Zero. compartmentalize everything. Um, <laughs> it's weird. Like as you were saying that, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. God, 95 years and this is the third I sequel? Know. Why That's did weird. why why did we do this? this was, <laughs> but I didn't I don't think we ever I don't know. Somehow it's you convince yourself that everything's going to be fine mm -hmm. and that it'll be easy. And then it isn't and uh, And then it's fine. And it's fine. <laughs> um, I hope. So I mean obviously there is pressure and it, the legacy of the studio is so huge that mm -hmm. it definitely sits on your shoulders, but um, Really working with John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman and this guy again, like it's we have a great cast and a great group Two of people. Two new people too. Oh, uh, okay. Taraji P. Henson and Gal Gadot. Gadot. Like, so the I mean, family grows. Yeah, so it really was more fun than pressure laden. And you guys would have worked together on Zootopia before, and the immediate similarity that strikes me between this film and Zootopia is that they're both set in these huge, expansive worlds. Mm -hmm. So how much work and kind of preparation goes into that element of making the films? Um, again, it starts with delusion. <laughs> it starts <laughs> with us saying, hey, you know what would be a great idea? Let's send them to the internet, their, their electronic beans. You know, that it seems like the perfect place to go. <laughs> and you tell everyone, you know, at the studio about the idea, they get excited. And then the next day, you go into work and say, what does the internet look like? You know, so um, that's where we did a lot of research um, mm -hmm. into what these these what the internet really is. You know, it's it is truly a physical thing. It's buildings filled with servers and wires connecting the whole world. And um, as funny as it sounds, it's like these visits to these giant server farms really did inspire the look and feel of this big internet city that, that we built. Going to Kenya was what inspired Zootopia, and we <laughs> went to a dirty building in downtown Los Angeles, five miles from our studio. Very romantic. <laughs> Inspiration comes from the strangest places. Yeah. You guys both have some like really interesting like backgrounds and credits as well. Rich, I saw that in the past you've worked on The Simpsons and Futurama, which yes. are two beloved TV shows. How did they prepare you for then going into the world of Disney that you're in now? Um, well, I don't know if you know the, the difference between anim or directing animation and television mm. and film is television has to happen very fast. Sure. Um, you're always behind from the first day that you start on a show you're already behind schedule. So um, that was just great training in uh, presenting your best idea very, very quickly. If the first idea wasn't perfect, it's mm -hmm. the, the second one better be, because that's about as many bites as you get at the Apple. And on a movie like this, of course, we, we have much more time but working on those shows really, really trained me as a director, you know, to get to the heart or the meat of the scene and, and recognize that very, very quickly. And then for yourself, Phil, you worked on The Brothers Grimsby, which is in mm -hmm. a totally different direction <laughs> to this movie. Yeah. So you did Zootopia, then Brothers Grimsby, then Ralph Breaks the Internet. How did you get from that mindset of like <laughs> kids animation to definitely for adult sense yeah. of humor back to kids animation again? Uh, I have a background in, I started off in um, more independent film. So I had worked in, um, 
you know, some, some more adult uh, subject matter. Uh, that sounded wrong. I, <laughs> I did some independent films, um, you know, before coming to Disney, and so kind of have a foot in both worlds. And I had met Sasha Baron Cohen a number of years ago and had that uh, idea for him maybe right around the time of the first Wreck-It Ralph. And uh, um, I can't take full responsibility for what that movie became. Sasha becomes sort of his own. <laughs> <laughs> his own machine. Um, but I think for me, trying to be truthful to characters and comedy that comes out of characters is my goal. Whether that's always achieved is, is debatable, I suppose. But certainly working with Rich, we've had good luck doing that. And I suppose my very last question for you guys is there are so many, you know, standout scenes and moments in R Ralph Breaks the Internet, so many great characters, new and old. For each of you, was there one particular element of the movie, maybe a scene or character, that stood out for you, that exceeded even your own expectations for it? Um, well, we uh, very early on knew we wanted to take Vanellope to an online racing game mm -hmm. world. Um, and that's where the idea of this, this new location, Slaughter Race, comes from. Um, and we, we wanted her to meet kind of the female equivalent to Ralph in this world, where if Ralph is a, a big brother, albeit kind of goofy one, you know, to, to Vanellope, that this new character, Shank, um, played by Gal Gadot, you know, is, is like a wise, kind of tough, big sister uh, character to Vanellope. And, uh, not only is there just a great sense of emotion there of, of Vanellope meeting this, this kind of mentor figure, but um, there's a really incredible action sequence that takes place there when Vanellope and Shank first race against each other. And we looked at like all of our favorite live action chase scenes, you know, from, from the 70s or 60s even up to today. Um, and I'm really proud of what the crew has put together. It doesn't feel like a cartoon mm -hmm. car chase. It feels like it can stand head and shoulders with any of the, the really awesome live action ones that, that we both love. Um, and to me, being able to, to helm that with Phil is a high point, I, I feel. And for yourself, Phil? The end of the film is still very emotional to me mm -hmm. when Ralph and Vanellope have a, a moment of kind of coming to terms with what their friendship is turning into yeah. and how it's changed. And um, it, it's about friendship, but for me as a parent, it, it pulls at my heartstrings because someday I'll say goodbye to my kids when they move. And, and um, I, th I think somehow I'm... I'm I'm still getting, I still get emotional thinking about that scene and it's, it's one I'm really proud of because it, it, could have, it could have become sentimental or treacly and I think, I think it earns its way into the movie. Brilliant. Well, we'll leave it there, guys. Thank you both Thank so you. much Thank and you. congratulations again. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you very much.